Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James Grounded Family Bible Study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly, I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Numbers <clears throat> chapter 11. And when the people complained, complained displeases the Lord, it displeased the Lord. And the Lord heard it. And the anger was kindled, kindled, excuse me. And the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. And the people cried unto Moses. And when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. And he called the name of the place Tabria, because the fire of the Lord burnt them, that burnt among them. That Tabria means burnt. So here is complaining again, and there's no mention of what they're just complaining to complain. And boom, fire comes down, just as what the fire came down between uh, Nahab and Abihu. Boom. Now you got to thank God for the mercy and grace that we are under, under this side of Calvary. Because if God were to do what he's doing to the children of Israel on the way to the promised land, there would be nobody that would be alive when Jesus came if, if things like that would be with the church age. God's mercy and grace when he's, and the thing is, and I say this because I've heard a few people say this to me. Let me see God. Show me God. And what they mean to me, show me God. And these people from Exodus 20, from the night they came out of the Passover, of seeing uh, darkness in Egypt and they have light, to see that certain plagues happen to the Egyptians and nothing happens to them, to see the frogs and to see the lice and See everything that God's done for him. Walk across a major sea called the Red Sea on dry land. Fire and, and thunder and, and earthquakes upon a mountain. And from that mountain, God's voice. And God's, they say, oh, we need water. And he provides water. Oh, we're hungry. And he gives them food. Because we're going to get into that in a minute here. He provides his spiritual manna. And then here they are griping and complaining. Most of these Jews we're talking about right now are not living by faith because they saw God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The only thing they have not seen is the land. They've seen God. They've seen Moses' face lit up. They've seen the miracles. And they had no reason to gripe and complain. What about a Christian? We ought not be griping and complaining, but we have not seen as much as the Jew has seen. And yet the Jew does not have something that we have. We have the complete written word of God. And the mixed multitude. So this is the only place that this word appears in the Bible. There's Egyptians and there's Israelites and maybe others. No, no, they picked up anybody on the way also, but that was among them. Fell a lusting. That's a key word for the rest of this chapter. A lusting. And the children of Israel also wept again. So that mixed multitude brings Israel. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh God. And who said... Remember, it says the children of we're going outside to mix multitude. We're looking at the children of Israel. Who shall give us flesh to eat? Manna? 
that manner that fulfilled your food for the entire day and double portion on the, on the day before the Sabbath to fulfill it on the Sabbath. Okay? But now, or, oh, wait a minute. Who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish. I'm particularly a person that doesn't like fish, but they remember the fish. Which we did eat in Egypt freely? You were treated with rigor. You were beaten, being beaten because you were not bringing enough uh, tail of bricks. Your life, you cried to God and said, God, help us. Get us out of this mess. And we ate fish freely. The cucumbers. Oh, oh the cucumbers. And the melons. And the leeks. And the onions. And the garlic. You couldn't pick out any other good food besides I, I like melons, watermelons. But now our soul is dried away. It's dead. No life. We got no life. We're walking, talking, complaining, but we have no life. There is nothing at all besides this manna before our eyes. Oh. They're not content with what God's given them. We want something more. We want a man a sandwich with tuna fish. And put a cucumber on it. They want a subway. In the middle of the wilderness. So they can walk up to the counter and say, uh, okay, i got to have the manna bread. <laughs> I like uh, the tuna fish. Can you put some cucumbers on it, some melons, some leeks, and the onions and the garlic? And some may want to toast it. They're not content with what God's given them. And the manna, now here's, here's the Holy Spirit. Because verse 7 and 8 is not the people speaking. The people have already spoken in verse 5 and 6. We're sick and tired of this manna. I'm tired of it. And the manna was as coriander seed. I don't know if I've ever had that. And the color thereof as the color of deolium. And the people went up, went about and gathered it. You had to go work for it. And ground it in mills. You grind it up, make it a powder. Psalm 78, 25, I believe that's the place where it says this is angel's food. You want devil's food cake, go to the Catholic Church and get your little wafer. This is angel's food. And beat it. It was ground and beaten like Jesus Christ. So they ground it in mills and they beat it in a mortar. That's that mortar and pestle. And baked it in pans. And made cakes of it. And the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. Now, the only thing I would probably, by that description, they would probably make, uh, make like a donut, a fried donut or a fried dough. And it was fried in Exodus 16, 14 to 31. This manna could be fixed any way you wanted to. There was no restrictions. But we're tired of it. Tired of the leftovers, and not really leftover because it was fresh the next day. And when the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell upon it. Now, manna again means what is it? We don't know what it is. They did not have no idea what this food was, but it tasted like fresh oil, uh, biscuits, or cake. Then Moses heard the people weep throughout their families. Everybody's doing it. Every man in the door of his tent. He's sitting from the door. Oh, I'm getting tired of this stuff. I want this old food. I want to go back to Egypt. Things were so much better there with the food. And the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly. Moses also was displeased. Now they're starting to affect the preacher. God is angry with them. They're griping and complaining. And Moses is like, oh, God. And this is what he's going to say in verses 11 and 12. Oh, God. And your griping and complaining affects others. 
Moses is a man of God. He's loved by God. He, he's spoken to God. And God's spoken to him. He's, he's displeased. And Moses said unto the Lord, Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant at me? <laughs> I'm being afflicted. And wherefore have I not found favor in thy sight? That thou layest the burden of all this people upon me. Now the result, the people complained, Lord God, I can't handle these people. I'm tired of them. They are pains in the neck. Now Moses is having a God moment here. God, angry with them. I'm going to... I'm going to get rid of them all and I'll make a family of you. I've had it with them. Leave me alone. I'm going to destroy them. And Moses step up and say, Lord, come on. They're your people. You called them out. If you do anything to them now, Egypt's going to be upset and they're going to rank on you and you're going to be in trouble. Now, Moses is having that moment with them. And Moses going to God and saying, I'm tired of these people. I'm sick of them. Lord God, will you do something with them? And God's going to say, yeah, behave yourself. Be nice. I love you. If a pastor's complaining about a congregation, the book of Numbers tells you, hey, there's nothing new under the sun. They're humans. There's no perfect assembly until we get to the clouds and then we're sinless. Perfection. After we come out of the judgment seat of Christ. Thou layest the burden of all this people upon me. Have I conceived all this people? No. <laughs> Have I begotten them that they should say unto me, Carry them in thy bosom as a nursing father, beareth the suckling child unto a land which thou swearest unto your father? God, am I their father? Now look at that. Here's a guy who's the pastor of a congregation. He said, I'm not their father. I'm not Father Moses. <laughs> if these were my children, man, uh oh, God, help. And Moses is also saying, they're not going to you, God. They're blaming me. Remember that time? I think we went through it. We're going to come up. The earth opened up and it swallowed children of Israel down right into the pit. And then the earth closed itself up. And they had the nerve to say that was Moses' fault. Really? So what's happening to Moses now, he's getting tired of the... And he, he's, he's got all right. Because he's been blamed for things that he has not done. And now they're hungry. They're not satisfied. They got the food from God. They're going to give us something else, Moses. And Moses is that guy behind the subway counter when they've already gone through all the food because all the pigs have eaten it all. And there's more people saying, we want, we want, we want, we want. And all he's got is manna. And they're screaming and hollering at him. And Moses is angry because we've already seen Moses has an angry condition, which is bad. When should I have flesh to give unto all this people? Food. For they weep unto me, saying, give us flesh that we may eat. Go get the manna. I am not able to bear all this people alone. Because it's too heavy for me. He is now pleading to God for help. I can't handle it all. I am beyond my limits with these people. And even God says, and Moses says about this, they are stiff-necked people. Jews are hard to... The Roman government hated them when they came in and took over Israel. They pestered them to get rid of one man going around doing right. Did you hear what I said about the Jews? They pestered Herod and they pestered Pontius Pilate for one man going around for three and a half years doing right. And yet God says to love them and God says you better bless them. Because if you don't, you're going to get a curse. And if thou deal thus with me, 
kill me. That's how bad it's gotten. Moses, like, I'm done. And those where he says it, he says, "Don't kill them, just kill me." Now this is the same guy later. I'm going to say, Moses, you can't go in that land. You're going to go up in the mountain. You're going to see the land, but you're you're not going to go in it. And he turns around and said, God, okay, if that's the case, you need to find something to, to guide these people in that land to do right. And that's when Joshua was called. And you imagine Joshua at that moment. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. But, I've seen what you've done to your man. <laughs> but he's at the point right now, kill me. This is how Moses right now is at the end of this rope. There's nothing we can do now. And yet there's food. But it's not the food they want. I only thing I could think about, let's say you throw a party. And you got food there and drink. Soda, water, other kind of good drinks, not your hard drinks. And your, your, your guests come. And you got everything there but what they want. And you got a whole bunch of people that's in your house at your party are upset. Though you got food there, it's not what they wanted. You didn't get cherry cola. Ugh. I wish these people would just leave. But he Moses says, "Kill me, I pray thee." Out of out of hand. I pray thee out of hand. That's kind of a weird expression. Whose hand? The hand of the people. I, it's, I would assume it's God. It's God in control of him. I know you're in control, in control of God, but these people. <laughs> I wonder how many pastors ever feel like that. Lord God, these they're all, ah! If I have found favor in thy sight, and let me not see my wretchedness. He's, he's getting, okay, he's getting to the, all right, I'm a sinner myself. I've been picking on these guys, but I'm no better. Look at Moses, I'm no better. Ooh, Lord, I, I've been complaining, I'm sorry. And the Lord said to Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel. These are the top dogs of all of Israel. Whom thou knowest to be elders of the people. Old people. They've got wisdom. They've got knowledge. And officers over them. And bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation. That they may stand there with thee. So it's immediate. Moses is talking and it looks like God interrupted him. Oh, I don't want to see my wretchedness. Moses gathered the people. Well, he said, Amen, in Jesus' name or in the Lord's name. And he already answered. And I will come down and talk with thee there. I will take the Spirit, which is upon thee. That's the Holy Spirit. No, it says upon thee, not in thee, even Moses. Even Moses did not have the Holy Spirit in him. He is not as washed from his sins as we are washed from our sins. Now he's done right according to the Old Testament for sin atonement, but it's not paid. So he doesn't get the Holy Spirit in him. He gets it upon him and will put it upon them. God's going to give the Holy Spirit for guidance. And they shall bear the burden of the people with thee. With I'm not going to take it totally with against with you, but it'll be with the others. That thou bear it not thyself. Look how God has answered his prayer. And no one's dead. And say thou unto the people, sanctify, set apart yourself against tomorrow, and ye shall eat flesh for you shall eat, for we have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was with, for it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you flesh, and ye shall eat. God's like, okay, I've heard you complain. It ain't Moses. 
And ye shall not eat one day. Nor two days. Nor five days. Nor ten days. Nor twenty days. God's getting it. But, e but even a whole month. Until it comes out of your nostrils. <laughs> God. He's angry because they upset Moses. It's going to come out of your nose. It will be loathsome unto you. You think man is bad? You think you're going to get that every single day? You think that's bad? What do you see what I'm going to give you now? Because that ye have despised the Lord which is among you. And have wept before him. Saying, we, why came we out of Egypt? Thank you, God, for taking us out of us. No, no, thank you, God, for the slavery. Give us more. And Moses said, the people among who I am are 600,000 footmen. That's it, just the footmen, the soldiers. Besides the women and children. Do you see an amazing part of the gospel story coming up now? This is the disciples. God, there are, how many people are here, God? And all we got is, uh, I, mean, I forget how many pieces of how many bread and, and two fish. This is the disciples walking up to God saying, uh, what's going on here? And thou hast said, I will give them flesh that they may eat a whole month. That was only one afternoon with Jesus. Shout the flocks, the sheep. And the herds, the cattle, the hamburger, lamb chops, be slain for them to suffice them? Or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them to suffice? Moses is like, he doesn't understand yet. God, you're going to feed them for a month? What are we going to do? Have a big barbecue? There are more people here than it looks like the animals that they could provide a brunch. So here, God's even spoken, speaking to Moses, and Moses is like scratching his head like the disciples. Oh, Come on, God. <laughs> Just, Lord God, thank you for this bread, and thank you for this fish. Break it up, gave the disciples, and they got a 12 baskets. Shall the flocks and the herds be slain for them to suffice them? Or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them to suffice them? I don't understand this. Mark the disciples there when they come to Jesus. Uh, yeah, right. And the Lord said unto Moses, Is the Lord's hand waxed short? Now Jesus, when he's dealing with the disciples, doesn't say anything to him. He says he blessed, blessed the food and gave it to the disciples and they gave it to the people. Is the Lord's hand waxed short? Thou shalt see now whether my word, my word, shall come to pass unto thee or not. So it's God's word. How did Jesus turn those fish and those bread to feed 5,000 and 4,000? The word of God. That's the same word that said, and I will quote, let there be, let there be, let there be. And when God said, let there be, there was nothing to be until God said, let there be. You're looking at, the, you're looking at almost a creation account right here, Genesis 1. But the bread was already there. He just let there be more for everybody. And Moses went out and told the people the word of the Lord. He probably still scratching his head. And gathered the seventy men of the elders of the people and set them around about the tabernacle. They're like they're almost like around the tabernacle, all the way around. I don't know. It says round. And the Lord came down in a cloud. Ooh, what's that picture? That's Second Advent. That's Jesus Christ. Don't tell me Jehovah's not Jesus, because there is the Second Advent right there. And spank with him. And took of the Spirit, there's the Holy Spirit, the capital, it's a small ass here, that was upon him, Moses, and gave it unto the seventy elders. And it came to pass that when the Spirit rested upon them, they prophesied. That's the first time that word shows up. Mark that. 
Now, what is prophesied? Let's go to Jude. i got to find this verse. So you can understand Jude. Well, not understand Jude. Understand prophecy. What is prophesied? Because Philip's daughters, the event, the, the prophesied in the book of Acts. And Jude 14. I won't tell you what chapter number. And Jude 14 says, Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these things, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints. Now, what's the prophesy? What's going to happen? So when you're soul winning, a woman can't say nothing. No, she's her not a sub authority over a man when it comes to soul winning and all that. And yet, Philip's daughters in the book of Acts on this side of Calvary prophesied. And what is prophecy today if you go in all the world and preach the gospel? If you don't believe on Jesus Christ to be saved, you're not saved. You're going to hell. That's prophesying. Now, you're not giving a Bible lecture. You're not giving a Bible uh, 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 education, learning, or anything like that. You're just telling somebody what's going to happen. So what's going on here? This prophesy. They're proclaiming the future and did not cease. I can only imagine what future they were telling these people about the Israel, what they're going to happen, but it doesn't say. So, the elders, according to the Bible, are to be respected. And the first time that prophecy shows up in the Bible, here it is in Numbers, and involves the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the Word of God. But there remained two of the men in the camp. The name of one was Eldad. And the name of the other was Medad. We don't know if they're brothers or who are. And the Spirit rested upon them. And they were of them that were written. I don't know where. I don't know what. But went not out into the tabernacle, and they prophesied in the camp. Written as the, among the elders, but didn't go to the tabernacle? They're not in the group of people in the tabernacle. They're in the camp. And they're prophesying. And there ran a young man and told Moses, and said, Eldab and Medab do prophesy in the camp. Hey, there's two other guys over here doing what you guys are doing right now. But they're not here at the assembly. They're not in church. They're outside the church telling the people. Almost like a street preaching. A public ministry. That's not what would Jesus do. Listen, there's a group of people at the temple right now. They're with the church in the wilderness. The building, the, the tent. There they are preaching right there. Most, and there's two guys that are in the camp. Prophesying. I prophesy when I street preach. I prophesy when I'm at the flea market. Hey, listen, today a man received Christ as his Savior. I told him, I said, unless you believe on Jesus Christ, he's the standard of going to heaven or hell. I prophesied. And he trusted and believed. Thank God. And Joshua, oh, here's Joshua, the son of Nun. That, that can't be so. How can Joshua be the son of none when a woman is dedicated to be a virgin to Jesus, Jesus Christ in the church? That, that, that's none, right? That, that's what I grew up, those women that wore the, the, the weird black and white clothing. But that's a, there's a problem because the Bible says that none is a man and it's Joshua's father. Now, I know nuns are ugly, but they ain't that ugly. That They look like a, well, some of them do. So let's grab a word out of the Bible. Let's call our, our women nuns. And the Bible word is that's a man. Almost like Santa Claus. Santa means female in Spanish. You got a man woman. Now you got a group of women who are called out there are mans. That Catholic church has got it all messed up. They got priests who are fooling around with the wrong sex. Joshua, the servant of Moses. Or we already know later on that Joshua is going to get promoted. 
don't know if it's promotion, but one of his young men answered and said, My Lord Moses, forbid them. And Moses said unto him, Envious thou for my sake? Matthew 27, 18 and Mark 15. I think that's 10. 10 or 16. Bad writing. I bought this new Bible to make my notes and some of the notes I write, I can't even read. Pilate said for envy, they turned Jesus over to the Roman government. Now Joshua, you know what Joshua's doing? He's protecting the, the preacher. No unauthorized <laughs> preaching. That's what he's saying. That's what they're doing. They're preaching. And Joshua's like, you got to knock it off. That's not right. And Moses said to him, envy is thou for my sake. Joshua, I'm not the only man of God around here. I'm not the, evidently, Joshua, I'm not the only preacher here. It's not Moses, it's not www.moses.com. It's not Moses television. Would God that all the Lord's people were prophets. See the prophets and the prophesied? They're one the same. And Moses says, I wish there were more people like that. I wish there were more people go out in the street. I wish there were more people go knocking on doors. I wish there would be more people that go to the nursing home. I wish there would be more people go pass out gospel tracts. I wish there would be more people tell people what the future of the Bible holds. And the Lord would put his spirit upon them. I wish there'd be more. So we recorded in this chapter 73 people now that have that spirit upon them that are prophesying, including Moses. The 70 elders, these two, and Moses. Moses said there, there is 600,000 footmen. And God could only find 70. And then these two. And Moses get Joshua later on, we're going. He's going to be a minister. He's going to be a, a, a prophet in his own book. So seventy four. And Moses got him into the camp. He and the elders of Israel. And boom! That's it. That ends it. There's no rebuke. There's no. That's not what Jesus would do. There's no, you're turning the people away. And Moses turns to the best man he's got outside of Aaron and says, Hey, Aaron, Joshua, don't worry. It's okay. I wish everybody did it. You know what preachers think would, would believe that? I wish everybody in my congregation would be like that few people that do what they're supposed to do. And there went forth a wind from the Lord. Jonah. God is in control of the wind. Not your meteorologist. God can control a hurricane if you seriously pray to him. It's happened before. And brought quails from the sea. Those little birds that you can eat. I don't know what they were doing out in the sea, but I don't know if they got trapped in this wind. But here the wind brings these quails. And let them fall by the camp. By the camp. And as it were a day's journey on this side. And as it were a day's journey on that side. Round about the camp. So all around this camp. Over 600,000 footmen again. More and more. Twelve tribes scattered north, east, south, and west. A day's journey around that. That's a quite a bit of a big circle. A day's journey from the center of this of this mass of the nation of Israel where the tabernacle is, and then out that a day's journey is these quail. That's a big mass of quails. When they remember what God said, until it comes out of your nostril. The other round about the camp, as it were, two cubics high. And that would be, if, if it's your finger to your elbow, that would probably be up 
to your pelvis area. If they're low to the ground, they're high to the ground, they're from your belly button up to your head. That's a lot of quail. Upon the face of the earth. So it's ground. You are walking in quail when you're taking a walk. You're, you're bumping against them, you're kicking them, and they're getting you in the knee. And the people stood up all that day, and all that night, and all the next day. And they gathered quails. He that gathered least gathered ten omers. And let's see what they got here. One omer is 86 gallons. I don't know how they got, gathered gallons of quail. So according to this measure, what they say, uh, they know better. That's 860 gallons of quail. That's a lot of fish tanks. That's one thing I can relate it to. And they spread themselves, spread them all abroad for themselves round about the camp. And I with them, they laid it out after they got their, their quail. So everybody's going out there for three or four days. They're getting, there's nothing but quail. You think if they got sick of the manna by now, you think they'd be getting sick of this quail? And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, they're chewing it. Ere it was chewed, the wrath of God was kindled against the people. And the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. Now, there's a question here. Why did God do this? And one of the things that comes to my mind, and it could be thrown in the garbage can, is... Are they eaten with the blood? Which they've been forbidden. They're truly not thankful. Gluttony. Come on, let's hurry up and eat the quail so we can go shopping and then watch the pigs being cast back and forth. Now, this does not bring us to the time that when they complained, they had food, and I don't think there's a, let's see, G... When they cried out to God the first time for food, because there was no food, and when the manna came, because now they have manna. Verse 7, 8, and 9. There is manna. They're just sick and tired of it. And God is, okay, I'll give you something else. I'll give you something sick and tired of it. I'll give you a whole bunch of quails. And they're just munching on it without thankfulness as America and I'm, I'm assuming, and I could be wrong about this, they probably have not taken the blood and put it upon the crown. Maybe they did. It does not say. And they called the name of the place Kibroth Habt Hakava. Because they, because there they, bur they buried the people, and I watched that word, lusted. And when we think about lust, we look at lust as, oh, you're drooling over a naked body. We think of pornography. And it's, it's lustful. And it's wrong. Whoso looketh upon a woman and lusts after her in his heart has already committed adultery. That's lust. I don't have the verse here, but it, Paul says in his writings, Except I, I, I'm not quoting completely. Except I have not loved, known lust, and he says the next word that goes with that is covet. And the lust you get here is not just oh, fil ooh, ooh, sexual desire. It's coveting. They wanted more than what God has given them. They are not thankful for what God has given them, and that's not a picture of America. I don't know what it is. Now, we just passed the Christmas season. And I was joking to my wife, I think Christmas Day is on the afternoon, I said, or whatever it was. I said, how many people today are now upset and angry because all the gifts they got, they didn't get that phone number 12. They didn't get the, what they wanted. They didn't get everything on their Christmas list. Now, that's what's going on here. 
They were not thankful. They were not appreciating what God had given to them. They took for granted this quail. It's like, we deserve it. You deserve a break today. Uh, whoa. Let me have it my way. And you see this in the advertising of restaurants and food and places like that, that you get to get it whatever, however you want it. And you know what God says about that? Boom, you're dead. It's amazing how when my family and I go out, and I'm not boasting, and we'll go out and we'll bow our head before we have our meal, and somebody will come tap us on the shoulder. It's good to see you do that. We don't see anybody else do it. Unthankful. And the people journey from Keeper of Haviva, whatever however that said, onto Hezareth and abode in Hezareth. And what a way to end that chapter. We just moved to another place. We moved away from the dead people to another place. And God said that moved there 35. Is that 30 days later? I got to say 30 days. A particular guy we dealt with today. A whole biblical month is 30 days. So you got to wonder between 34 and 35, but that's actually a month, 30 days. Or did the quail follow him? But it's unthankful. It, 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 I can't say guaranteed because it doesn't say. I said one of the things is it's, they're unthankful. They're coveting. They think it deserves to them. And like I said, there could be. I could be totally wrong with it. They also are just eating with the blood too. And God totally says no to that. But. And I gotta be careful because because there's preachers today that are not right with God. You can't say, oh, every preacher behind the pulpit. If you got somebody who's really doing right and really loves the Lord and, and is seeking God and God is helping him and guiding him in the ministry, you better not back talk that man. Because even God got angry. Because the preacher got angry. Moses done right. And God got angry with the congregation because the preacher got angry. And don't go every preacher in the world. No, definitely not. Because Corinthians 11 says Satan didn't have his men in the pulpit. But you got somebody who's truly doing right. You better watch what you say. You better pray for them. Help them. And God showed the thing. And then even that, when God provided for them, they didn't care. They didn't say, oh. And God said, boom, you're dead. And there's not a picture of America other than Numbers chapter 11. I don't know what else there is. And this is the same sin that uh, Jeremiah or Ezekiel tells us about Sodom. They were unthankful. They had all the stuff in the world. They were complete. It wasn't just sodomy. They weren't given to help people who needed it. They were gluttons. And they were unthankful to God. So was Israel. So is America. In America, if you want to get back to God, you got to get the Old Testament back into schools and teach what happens when you're in sin and you have pleasure in sin and you make little cakes, devil food cake, to the Queen of Heaven. It's only going to get worse in America if they turn away from God. 